Hi, this is Dr. Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's take a look at the next video. In this video, we're going to talk about some of the reactions to make alcohols and what we can do with them. One of the ways that we've seen previously to make alcohols is the hydration of an alkene. This reaction occurs, as you recall, by first protonation of the alkene to form a carbocation, and that carbocation the byproduct would be HSO4- minus if we're using sulfuric acid. In the next step, the water molecule would then add to the carbocation to generate a hydronium ion, which would look like this. And then in the last step, the conjugate base of sulfuric acid would take the proton off and regenerate the sulfuric acid catalyst and the alcohol product. The reverse of this reaction is actually an E1 elimination reaction. So one can imagine taking sulfuric acid and protonating the OH, that would give us this hydronium ion plus the HSO4 minus. That could undergo bond breaking to deliver water as a product plus the carbocation and then that carbocation could lose a hydrogen adjacent to it to form the double bond. That would be an E1 elimination. It's the exact opposite of the addition of water to the alkene. One of the main reactions of alcohols are the substitution reactions in the presence of an acid, a hydrogen halide in particular. We can take an alcohol group and react it with an acid to generate a product where the OH group has been substituted for the halogen and water is the byproduct. And we should think a little bit about how those reactions could take place. Of course, this being an acid, uh, one of the first steps again could be protonation of the OH to form a hydronium ion that would look like this. Now that could undergo a substitution reaction because this positive charge on the oxygen greatly weakens the carbon-oxygen bond. In the starting alcohol, it's very difficult to do a substitution with OH- as a leaving group. However, now a leaving group in this case would be water as a neutral leaving group. And this could undergo simply an elimination to form a carbocation plus water. That would be our product here. Uh, and then the halogen ion could add to that to give us this alkyl halide. Or if this carbon is not suitably substituted to do SN1 substitution, uh, it could undergo SN2 substitution directly if it's a less hindered carbon with the halogen reacting directly before the OH leaves. That would be an SN2 process. Both of these mechanistic pathways are possible. In general, however, what we see is that the reaction proceeds fastest with things like HI, and it's a little bit slower as you go higher up on the periodic table in terms of the halogen. Uh, on the other hand, the degree of alkyl substitution also matters in the success of this substitution reaction. If we're talking about cationic conditions, then SN1 substitutions would predominate, and we see that tertiary substrates react best, better than secondary substrates, better than primary substrates, and much better than the methyl substrates. That being said, we can do this substitution on all different kinds of alcohol substitutions. In this slide, you can see that we have a primary alcohol, and if we heat it to 120 degrees in the presence of HBr, we can do the substitution of the OH for the Br- minus, with the byproduct again being water. Um, the secondary compound, notice that it requires a little bit less temperature, but it also does the reaction. However, the tertiary alcohol undergoes this reaction at room temperature. So it's uh, much easier to do this reaction when it's tertiary. You should recognize, though, that in the first two cases, this is going by an SN2 substitution mechanism, and this last case is going by an SN1 substitution mechanism. We can see this reaction take place also as long as we have some form of being able to provide the nucleophilic species, in this case a halide ion, in the form of sodium halide and an acid such as sulfuric acid. It doesn't have to necessarily be HBr. You can get the H plus from something other than where the Br minus comes from. So in this case it's the sulfuric acid which initially does the protonation of the OH group to generate the hydronium ion. It doesn't matter how we make the hydronium ion because if we make the hydronium ion on a tertiary carbon center, it will undergo elimination to form the plus charge. And then our bromide coming from sodium bromide can react to form the product. So it's not necessarily the case that you have to have HBr itself to do the reaction. You can provide us bromide salt 
plus some other form of a protic acid. Well, there is another way to make alkyl halides. In particular, if we want to make a chloride, we can react an alcohol directly with what we refer to as thionyl chloride. That's SOCl2. Thionyl chloride does a direct substitution. The byproducts are gaseous, so what we get is SO2 gas and hydrogen chloride as a byproduct, but we generate the chlorine substitution product for the OH. This is a very good reaction that works particularly well for primary and secondary halides because this not only activates the OH for leaving, it also provides the source of the chloride. To get the bromine compound, you could use SOBr2, but a, a more convenient form of that is PBr3 or phosphorus tribromide. This also does a substitution reaction to replace OH with the Br. This will not work on tertiary substrates as it does involve an SN2 substitution reaction mechanism. Well, as we just saw, we could do the hydration of alkenes to form alcohols, and the reverse of that reaction is an elimination reaction. In, in this case, uh, since this is a tertiary alcohol, this acid-catalyzed elimination, or what we refer to as a dehydration because we're losing water, goes through an E1 mechanism where you, again, protonate the alcohol, you generate the hydronium ion, and it leaves to form a carbocation with loss of water. Water comes off, and that undergoes elimination to regenerate your acid catalyst and take the proton off. So take a look at these two alkenes. Let's say we want to synthesize these in our laboratory. What could you start with to do an elimination reaction that would produce those? Well, if you think about it, an alcohol group has to be on one end of the double bond. So this could potentially have come from, in the first case, this alcohol, where we have an OH group at this position. That could eliminate in that direction. Uh, it could eliminate at that direction, or it could eliminate in that direction, because there are hydrogens on either side. A better choice would be to use the symmetric OH group because it doesn't matter which side you take the hydrogen from in the elimination reaction. You'd end up with the same 2-pentene product. So this first alkene could come from the acid-catalyzed dehydration of either alcohol. This one, 2-pentanol or 3-pentanol. Either one could give this product. What about the second alkene here? What if we wanted to make that? If we think about this elimination reaction and what we know about this elimination, this could come from either the alcohol where the OH group was at that position, or it could come from the alcohol where the OH group was in this position. Which one would work best? Well, clearly this is going to be the best pathway, the one on the bottom, because this will only eliminate in one direction to form the more substituted alkene, whereas the one on the top could eliminate to form this alkene, but that's not the major product. The major product would be the elimination to form the double bond between the more substituted carbons, which would be this one. That would should end up being the major product. That would not be as efficient of a pathway because this would be the minor product. One other reaction we can do with alcohols is oxidize them if there happens to be hydrogens adjacent on the carbon that the OH is attached to. So if, for example, you lose H2 from this, you can generate an oxygen double bond to the carbon. This is what we would refer to as an aldehyde with a hydrogen in this position. And we could even oxidize this carbon further to put another oxygen to make a carboxylic acid group. In this oxidation process, there's a question of can we stop at the aldehyde stage or go all the way to the carboxylic acid? And fortunately, there are different reagents we can use to control the reactivity. The first step is easier to do than the second step. If we use a very strong oxidizing conditions, that is uh, chromic acid or chromium trioxide in the presence of acid, that will oxidize all the way up to a carboxylic acid, as long as there's at least two hydrogens there. If there's only one hydrogen present, it would have to stop at the stage of just the double bond oxygen, or what we call a ketone. If there are two hydrogens adjacent to that oxygen, and we want to stop at oxidizing only one of them to make a new bond to oxygen, there's a reagent we refer to as PCC. It stands for pyridinium chlorochromate, and that's a milder oxidizing reaction, which will only do this first reaction of the oxidation sequence and not the second one. So if we want to stop at the aldehyde stage 
without oxidizing further to the carboxylic acid, PCC is the reagent of choice. I'm introducing these oxidation reactions for your information. I'm not going to be testing over this reaction. So to summarize, we have ways to make alcohols that we've seen before. This is the acid-catalyzed hydration of alkenes. When the presence of something like sulfuric acid and water, we can add water across a double bond to generate the OH group. The opposite of this, or the elimination reaction, is a reaction where we can take alcohols and react it with sulfuric acid without water present in the presence of heat and then generate double bonds. This works best with more substituted ones because it is acid catalyzed, but it can work generally with many kinds of alcohols to do elimination reactions by E1 or potentially by E2 mechanisms, but E1 is most common. The other reactions of alcohols that we've talked about is the deprotonation or the formation of alkoxides or the O- minus of these alcohols by reacting with sodium metal. Other possibilities would be reacting with sodium hydride or if the alcohol has other features that makes it much more acidic than water, hydroxide could be used. But in general, hydroxide is not strong enough of a base to do that. The other thing we can do is substitute an OH group for a halogen. This could be done with hydrogen halides in the reactions they work best with tertiary substrates because it is an SN1 substitution which predominates in these reactions. However, if it's primary such as the example I've shown here or secondary, in the presence of heat you can do the reaction with HX. With primary and secondary substrates it's best to use something like thionyl chloride, SOCl2, to do the direct SN2 substitution of OH for the chlorine. And as I mentioned, the acid catalyzed dehydration or elimination reactions of water can be carried out in the presence of an acid and heat.